Yo, 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 what's going on YouTube, Devour here. Today we have a no-nonsense settings guide for Modern Warfare 3. We're gonna be going through everything, controller, graphics, audio, and interface. Everything will be time-coded down below as well. So if you guys know exactly what you need from me, skip to that part, get in, get out, get ahead. If you don't know exactly what you're doing in the settings, please watch this entire video. There's literally like 15, 20 settings you absolutely must change. And if you do not change these settings, you are at a huge competitive disadvantage and you probably didn't even know it. If you guys have never seen my gameplay before, here's a little small like 50 second clip of my gameplay so you can know if you like the way my game looks, sounds, and and feels, copy my settings, you'll get the exact same look, sound, and feel. Yeah, 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 please enjoy. Alright, now we're hopping right on into it. We'll get started with controller. I use a default button layout. I have an aim controller with four buttons on the back of it. I think that's the best way to go. It's made my movement, snaking, jump shotting, and slide canceling ten times better since I've switched to an aim controller. The, the, all these things are literally up to you. Controller vibration, definitely turn that off. Trigger effect, you must turn this off. If you have it like on or what it, whatever it's set to default, certain weapons you have to hold the trigger down longer in order to shoot the actual gun. So make your triggers more responsive, turn that off. Now here's where we start to get into some good sauce right here. You could test your uh, dead zone stick drift. Everyone's stick drift is gonna be different. My controller's brand new. So right now I have no stick drift. But even when I have no stick drift, I leave my left stick min and my right stick min at five. That way it keeps my controller good for longer. This way my controller will last like five, six months instead of just like two, three months. So if you guys have been burning through controllers super fast, try, try that little uh, tips and tricks out. Left stick max, set that to 95. That way you're running when you're only at 95% of your analog pushing all, all the way up. So you'll, you'll tactical sprint and you'll be running faster and, and it won't affect like being able to move slow as well. And make sure, make sure your left trigger and your right trigger are both at zero. They do not default at zero. If you put them down to zero, they're gonna be maximum responsiveness. Like it's gonna be like mouse click triggers. I have mouse click triggers, so it doesn't affect me too much. But for a lot of people that have like a regular controller, you absolutely need to set those to zero. Right there, boom. If you didn't have any of those settings down, you were at a huge competitive disadvantage. This is probably the most ridiculous thing that we ever have to do ever in Call of Duty. I hope we never have to do this again. When you're at your actual aiming inside the controller, it defaults like this. It's advanced horizontal stick sensitivity is set to 1.2. So what you need to do is you need to click on the number, put it down to custom first, and then put it down to 1.0. If you don't do that, it defaults at 1.2, and that's why your aim probably felt really weird. So I play on 5.5. Do that for your vertical and for your horizontal because they're both going to be set to 1.2 for no good reason at all. Most professional players play anywhere from 5.5, 6.6, 7.7, five, six, six, seven, seven, and 8.8. Eight. And then it also depends on how much frames per second you have. I set my ADS sensitivity multiplier. So when I'm zoomed in, I have it set to 0.95. So instead of it moving at 5.5 five when I'm zoomed in, it's moving at like 4.80 instead. So it makes it feel like you have more aim assist. Sensitivity multiplier, I don't do any of that stuff. Uh, tactical stance multiplier, just leave that the way it is. Aim response curve type, you definitely want to use dynamic and you wanna make sure it is set to 1.0. I forget if it was defaulted to 1.0 or not, but if it's not 1.0, turn it up to 1.0. You definitely want dynamic. Professional players were literally thinking about banning this aim response curve type because of how good it is. I promise it's better than linear, it's better than standard. Use dynamic, that's sauce. ADS sensitivity, transition timing, 1000%, you want that on instant. Again, you want your triggers when you're aiming and when you're shooting to be as responsive and as quick as possible. That way you're reacting and shooting your opponent faster than you're shooting them. All of this stuff I have set to default. Target aim assist, make sure that's on. If it wasn't on, you're welcome. You just got like 10 times better. <laughs> aim assist type. Some of my friends use Black Ops because they really love Black Ops games. I use default, totally up to you. Here's another huge, huge, huge setting. If you do not have this on, 
you're at a huge disadvantage and you look like a bot. You look like you don't know what you're doing. Turn on automatic tactical sprint. Anytime you're moving, you're always going to be moving at the at the fastest pace that you could possibly be moving. So when you're getting to cover, when you're when you're trying to avoid gunfire, when you're trying to get to a certain spot before your enemies and be the fastest guy on the map and lock down some map position, automatic tactical sprint is there and it is working. You want to have that on. If you don't have it on, I promise you look like a bot. Turn it on. Get better. Do better. Single tap sprint. I don't think that really matters if you have on automatic tactical sprint. Grounded mantle off. Automatic airborne mantle off. Automatic grounded mantle, hang, slide, left, right, duck, all that off. <laughs> it just gets in the way. Slide dive behavior. This is actually very, very important. A lot of people, I think it defaults to tap to slide. You need to set it to slide only if you want to be able to slide cancel properly. Now, proper slide cancel is slide, jump, zoom in. So if you have it set to slide, tap to slide, the controller has to think for a minute in order to know if you're doing dive or slide. So if you set it to slide only, it's a lot more responsive. Your slide cancels become a lot more cleaner. It needs to be set to slide only. I'm sorry, Dolphin Diving. That was an MW2 or an MW3 now. Plunging underwater, set to free. Whew, let me breathe a little bit. <laughs> parachute auto deploy. I really don't uh, parachute too often. So yeah, that's totally up to you. If you play Warzone, maybe you want that on. Sprinting door bash. Make sure that's on. Mine was actually off for a little while. I have no idea why. Aim down sight behavior hold. That's default. Uh, change zoom activation. This is also default. Equipment behavior. All this stuff. All default. All default. I use tap to reload. Some people use... Um, the other stuff, like they like to hold it. I don't like to do that. I like to be able to just reload really quickly. And then all this other stuff is all default. So right there in controller alone, we had a bunch of settings that you absolutely need to have, especially if you're on controller, on console, or on PC. If you don't have like half of those settings, you're about to be like 10 times better. You're welcome. Make sure you leave a like if you didn't have those on. You know I mean? Help your boy out. Help your boy out. I play on full screen borderless because I stream and stuff like that. But if you can, play on full screen uh, exclusive instead. Display gamma. Just make sure it's set to the monitor. The SRGB is monitor. The other one is for TVs. So if you're on a TV, be on a TV. If you're on a monitor, be on a, be on a monitor. Brightness, I have mine set to 51. Yeah, I just like to be a little bit different. Uh, I set mine to 51. If you have an NVIDIA PC like myself, make sure you have on plus boost on. This makes your game feel 10 times more responsive. And anytime we can get more responsiveness out of the game, that's exactly what we want. Eco mode, set it to custom, and then I turn everything off. Custom frame rate limit, I set this to 300 because 300 is more than enough. And my menu custom frame rate is set to 60 because I don't need more than 60 FPS in the menu. It gives your computer a small break when you're loading in between games. It helps avoid overheating on your game. I have no idea what the hell focus mode is. I don't use it, so I just leave that alone. High dynamic range, definitely turn that bad boy off. We're hopping into the quality tab now. So I play on 1440p, just to let you guys know. Uh, I play on a 1440p monitor. If you guys want my full specs and stuff like that, kick.com forward slash devour. Um, my landing page has all of my PC and audio equipment listed there. I use upscaling. So I'm on an NVIDIA graphics card. I'm on a 4090. So I use NVIDIA DLSS. I set it to quality, and then I set the DLSS sharpening to 85. This is huge. This is literally huge. It looks like native 1440p quality, but it gives me more FPS. When I stream, sometimes I'll set it down to balanced. That way I can still maintain my good FPS. Path, ray tracing, and ray construction. I think that's just inside the um, firing range, gunsmith, and loading screens. So I keep it off. I don't really care about those things. I care about the nicest looking gameplay possible. And with that being said, uh, VRAM scale target. I maxed that all the way up. Again, I have a maxed out PC. Some people, you're probably going to have to turn this down to 80. It depends on the gear that you're running. But me and Hummus, we both run ours at 90. We agree that's probably the best way to run it. Now, all of my settings are for content creators slash super serious streamers. All of my, all of my textures and everything, details, is set to high because I want to have the nicest possible picture for my audience. Now, if you're playing just like super hyper competitively, you could put all of these things on normal. And you don't even need bullet impacts, and you don't even need persistent effects either. Make sure you do have depth of field off, though. That does negatively affect you. That is an important setting that needs to be turned off. And, um, yeah, literally I have everything set to high. 
or ultra just for the nicest possible picture for my audience and and then especially if you're on a pc you really want and you want to be a content creator you really want to make sure your game looks as nice as possible because if your game looks nicer than someone else's they're instantly going to be like oh wow this guy's game looks so good and then they're going to give you more of a chance when they're watching your videos and or your streams something i found extremely i don't know why this is off water quality i actually like it to be on all that way when you hop in the water your gun and your gloves will actually look wet so if you want to if you want to be wet make sure you got it on all yeah yeah all right field of view pov i have mine set to 120 because i'm a content creator slash streamer if you want to be as competitive as possible most professional players will stick anywhere from 100 to 105 to 110 none of them go over 110 so if you guys want to be as good as possible i would recommend starting at 110 and then drip it down to however low you can possibly go to where the game doesn't feel weird it might be 107 106 for you sweet spot for you but if you are not a content creator or a streamer you don't need 120 if you want to be able to hit your shots as much as possible and have the most amount of aim assist helping you out as well do one do do below 110 i promise you when i play ranked i'm always on less than 120. i do 104 105 106 something like that ads field of view make sure it is on affected weapon field of view in modern warfare 2 i always had this set to wide always in this game when i set it to wide it feels like it adds another 10 fov onto my fov it feels like i'm on 130 fov so i set mine to default and i found out that after i set this to default I've landed a lot more shots and I've become a lot more accurate. And I think that's probably the most important thing in this game with the upped time to kill with well, having more health. The person who's more accurate in 90% of gunfights is probably going to win. So that's why I play on default. If you've been playing on wide this whole time, definitely give it a try. World motion blur, weapon motion blur, film grain. Turn all that stuff off. All these things just get in your way and make your game Harder for you to shoot back and to see people. This one as well. These are four super important settings. If you didn't have them off before, now you're 100% you're welcome. You're going to be playing 10 times better. First person camera movement, turn it to 50%. It defaults at 100%. Again, we don't want anything interrupting our line of sight or how we see enemies or how quickly we can register an enemy. Spectator camera, I like mine on game perspective. You can turn it to helmet, helmet camera if you want. Inverted flashbang, this is, I've had a ton of people tell me they love this. Instead of it making, blinding you and making your entire screen white, it turns the screen black instead. Just a nice quality of life improvement. Hopping right on into audio going down the list. I have headphones bass boost on. It creates a tighter dynamic range with EQ enhanced low end frequencies. Low end frequencies is where footsteps is found. So if you want to try to identify footsteps better, Headphones bass boost is currently the meta for that. Now, there's really, it's, it's, it's hard to hear footsteps in this game. It's unfortunate. But when everyone's dead and there's no gunfire going on, you can hear people running around in grass or on certain surfaces, even while they have covert sneakers on. And when you're in a 1v1 situation in Search and Destroy, those situations do tend to come up quite often actually here's my master volume i turn all the music stuff off because it does get in the way especially in the game and it'll get in the way of you trying to sound hard people the effects volume needs to be at 100 again if you want to be able to hear footsteps and rightfully identify where gunshots are coming from if you can hear a gunshot like one gunshot and you know exactly where he's at that's super valuable intel even if they have a suppressor on you and then dialogue volume 10 voice chop volume 40 all pretty basic stuff. All this stuff is all default. Last word, voice chat, proximity chat. Make sure those are on. We need those hot mics. We need those hot mics. Microphone level. Actually, a lot of people have this turned up to like 80 or 90. I'm begging you guys, turn it down. Your friends are going to thank me. Your friends are going to thank me. Turn it down to like 40, 50. Mine's at 20. That should tell you like it doesn't need to be crazy. Mono audio. Make sure this is off. If it's not, then you're not going to be able to have left and right audio. You'll only have everything combined all together, so you won't be able to tell anything. And then reduce tightness sound as well. It's another quality of life thing. When you get flashbanged, it makes this really sharp like sound. If you have that turned on, then it dulls that sound a lot. So it's just another quality of life thing. Uh, hit marker sound effects. I have mine set to Modern Warfare. I'm pretty sure that's the default. I'm actually set it to Classic for a little while just to test out Classic. So whichever one you prefer, you guys can do that. 
and then hopping into the interface. A lot of people might think interface doesn't have like the craziest things, but this is actually one of the biggest things that you need to change. Now, I have mine set to pink for me, my team, and my party. So this will make the scoreboards all pink for me. I just like the way that looks. It's just a nice aesthetic and it sticks out and people compliment me on that all the time. So if you want it to be a certain color, just make sure you, your team, and your party are all the same color. The enemy though, I have it set to yellow. That is for a reason. There's a lot of reddish, brownish, darker textures in this game that red, which is the default color, blends into and it's hard to see it. Yellow, there's barely any yellow, and a bright yellow like this one always sticks out. An interesting fact, yellow is one of the first colors to register in the human brain. The first like three, four games, it's gonna mess you up. You're not gonna, you're not gonna know right away, but after like three, four games, you, I promise you will come back to this video, you will comment and say, thank you so much, Devour. Yellow nameplates has made me a better player. You're welcome. I've been doing that since MW2019. I've gotten that comment over a thousand times, so I know it's not kept. Uh, filter 2, both, 100, 100. This is all just like stuff to make uh, the game look as nice as possible. HUD bounce. This is actually another secret gem right here. So it defaults all the way up and all the way out. That's what it defaults at. So your radar is all the way in the top left-hand corner. When you bring it all the way in, it brings your radar in an inch. So you don't have to turn your neck as much in order to see your radar, or you might not have to turn it at all if you have like really big eyes or if you look like Sid the Sloth. Uh, make sure your mini map is set to square, but bring the bring the HUD bounds in. Professional Warzone players, such as like Aiden and stuff like that, they all do that setting. Uh, horizontal compass, you really don't need this. I don't use it at all, but I think it makes the game look nice, so I keep it on. This is very important though. Crosshairs, you need to set it to static. It defaults on at on, so your crosshairs are moving around and it's like shaky. Again, it gives you unnecessary variables when you're trying to aim. A lot of people ask me about my center dot. The center dot is inside the crosshairs area. You can set it to default, larger or largest. On the right hand side, you guys see the sizes. I have mine set to the largest. That way I can see it. It helps me with centering and it helps me with accuracy. I think it makes a huge difference. They started that setting in MW2. Ever since they added it in, I've absolutely loved it. I have all this set. I have all this stuff set to uh, default. Player names, make sure it's set to full name. Because the bigger their name is, the easier it is for you to kind of like acquisition a nameplate off of them. So when you have a smaller name, it's kind of hard for people to get nameplate off of you. Telemetry, you guys can see exactly what I have mine set to. I have it set to FPS, latency, and the time of day. So people can just see what time of day it is for me. When I'm streaming, they don't have to ask me what time it is. They can see my FPS, see if my computer is worth buying, and latency so they can see all of the huge disadvantages that I'm at while I'm on 100 ping streaming and gaming in Hawaii. Uh, network in-game icon alerts. I actually really recommend having this on because there's a lot of packet burst issues going on in this game. It's like actually horrendous. And then all the tips and stuff, I turn all that stuff off. I think if you play the game for a week, if it's your first week playing, keep them on. But then after that, you probably have everything down already and the words just kind of like get in the way. So I turn that all off. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope I delivered this video in the fastest, most efficient way possible without wasting any of your, any of your time. Here's the class setup that I was rocking. This is the Zero Recoil MCW. It's literally insane. I use it on my stream all the time. And if you guys want to take your game to the absolute next level and just get as good as possibly you can, I highly recommend picking up an aim controller and rocking Code Devourer on the way to checkout. I'll have that linked inside the description down below. This is what my controller looks like. It's so sexy. You can build it way better than mine. I've never had a pink controller before, so I decided to make this one pink. Four buttons on the back, mouse click triggers. Everything is just super gorgeous. It makes slide canceling very easy, and you can um, change the paddles by just holding down the back two big paddles. You hold it down for 10 seconds, and then it starts blinking, and then you assign whatever paddle you want you hold that with down with it with whatever button you want. So if you want it to be YY, you want it to be Y, you just hold down the paddle and hit Y at the same time, it'll bind it together. Literally instantaneously, you don't need the extra like um, remapping unlock tool, whatever it is, things that scuffs use. And they have the fastest build time in the entire industry. I've been with them for a couple months now. I'm absolutely loving it. I've had a lot of positive reviews already, over 20 referrals and uh, yeah. Peace and love, babies. I appreciate you guys. If you guys want to see me gaming live with these settings, 
kick.com forward slash devour. I stream there every other day for a minimum of seven hours. And you already know we out here. We outside. We top fragging. Come join us. Peace and love, babies. I think I'll change bro, cause when the bitches hear this, they're gonna be like, wow. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. Smoking gas, living fast, wearing velvet. Yeah. Oh, it's like a four or five to the pelvis.